hello. Why are you sitting on the swing? Why shouldn't I? Because you're old. Yeah, that's true. If there is a motion that is simple in its description but deep in its applications to describe nature, that is the simple harmonic motion. In previous lessons, we talked about Hooke's law and the motion of the spring under external stress. The kind of motion described by the pendulum is very general and, and can be found in nature in many different systems. It describes the oscillatory motion of a spring, it describes the motion of a pendulum, it can be used to describe the motion of the moon about the earth, it can be used to describe the vibrations of molecules on a crystal, just to mention a few. Hooke's law describes a force that depends linearly on the position. This force induces what we call a simple harmonic motion. The position of the object follows a sine or a cosine motion. There is a characteristic frequency to the motion and an amplitude, which is the maximum elongation or distance to the equilibrium position. The acceleration is proportional to the elongation, but opposite in sine. The maximum position corresponds with the maximum acceleration, and when the particle is at the origin, then its speed is maximum. Depending on the initial conditions of the motion, we might need to consider a phase in the trigonometric function. For example, if the particle is at its maximum elongation initially, then, because the cosine is of 0 is 1, the initial phase is 0. But if the particle is at the origin, the phase will be either pi or minus pi, depending on the direction of motion of the particle at that instant. If the velocity is positive, then the particle goes into positive positions and we need the cosine function to grow and be positive. Then the initial phase will be negative pi. If the velocity is negative, then the particle goes into negative positions, the cosine function needs to be negative. The initial phase will be pi. Inside the trigonometric function, we need to have no units. Omega is the angular frequency. This is related to the frequency as omega equals to 2 pi f. f is the frequency, the number of oscillations per unit time. f has units of hertz or seconds to the negative 1. Omega, the angular frequency, has units of radians over second. Remember that radiance is not a real unit, it is a measure of a ratio between two lengths. We know that for circumference is 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the circle. If we want a smaller angle, we know that theta times the radius is the section of the curve. Now we can divide and find the angle in radiance, but this is the ratio of two lengths. Of course, instead of the cosine, you can use the sine. This can be convenient at some point if you want to avoid some specific initial conditions. The result in the physics is exactly the same with sine or with cosine. Let's now derive this expression twice with respect to time. So you see that the acceleration is negative times this constant times the position. Well, we know that the force is the mass times the acceleration. So we recover Hooke's law. Any force that is equal to a negative constant times the position will lead to a simple harmonic motion. Of course, from this result we can relate the angular frequency with the elastic constant of the spring and the mass of the bob. And the period also. This simple harmonic motion is a very specific kind of periodic motion. But not all periodic motion is a simple harmonic motion, though. Only if it can be described by a sine or a cosine function. 
the oscillatory motion of a spring is a clear example. Let's consider briefly the motion of the Moon about the Earth. Considering the trajectory of the Moon as circular, I want to observe the Moon from a reference frame where I only see the Moon moving on a line, from left to right to left to right. If I want to write the exposition of the Moon on my axis, I will project its shadow on that axis. Because it is a circular trajectory, the x component of that two-dimensional motion is r times cosine of theta. This angle theta is not constant, it changes in time as the Moon moves in circles. The angle theta elapsed covert by Moon's motion is equal to omega t, an angular velocity multiplied by time. So the x component is r times the cosine of omega t which happens to describe a simple harmonic motion. So the one-dimensional projection of the two-dimensional motion of the Moon about the Earth is a simple harmonic motion. Look that this is true because omega is constant, that is, because the speed of the Moon is constant. What other simple harmonic motions can you think of? May science be with you.